brings it over, kicks to Clark, quick release, three, splash from beyond the arc. Inbound into the corner, Polish shot, quick release, yes! Nice man coming. Come. One and one. Two points. Two point game. <laughs> Hard take down the middle. Tie ball game. game. Campbell. Seven seconds. Six, five, four, three, two. Game winner. Got it. Got it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding I, me? I told you he might have something to say about that. He just ran <laughs> and took my theory and slammed the door on it. I think Regina is a city that people often talk a lot of smack about. Regina is a basketball town. Um, you can really feel the sense of community and you can build that community around something that we all love and cherish, basketball. Basketball seems to be a, a sport that people want to be a part of regardless of their level of talent. You want to enjoy basketball as a sport and live in that basketball community for years, you have to be a good person. It lets you know that you don't have to be necessarily from the big city per se, or have a big name come from your community to do it. A lot of us didn't have those so-called role models or somebody in the NBA from our town. But I think what we did have is we pushed each other. We did it in a way that was full of respect. So it's crazy to see this and how how it's changing now into a basketball city. Because when we grew up, it was, it was a struggle to find, and I'm sure when you grew up too, it was a struggle to find open gym time, like an outdoor court that actually had like a regulation basket, or to find people who just wanted to go and hoop, right? Basketball is here, you know, for people to appreciate it more. So my, I'm like, what, what was it? Like, when did it happen, right? When did that passion, like that love of the game start? And I think it was watching my dad coaching, because I would just always go to practice with them. I'd go to LIT with his teams. I would go to tournaments for road trips. And it's like the community that was present, present in all those examples is what you want to be a part of. I kind of felt really blessed growing up in the 80s and 90s because you got to see Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. You watch the best guys doing it and you go out, in some cases, shovel the driveway to you know, uh, imitate their moves. And that was definitely my experience too. Playing at the university level and, and traveling to a lot of tournaments throughout the province, just being able to showcase and, and learn from so many different people. Um, basketball just became a part of, of how I was able to share who I was. But I'm also proud of just the community. We were always part of the community. Like I said, we were coached by people that knew the game and loved it and, and embraced us that way. I, I think it's such a, such a privilege to play this game and it's so accessible, I think, and that's what makes it, I think, really attractive to a lot of people. Basketball doesn't get as much of the limelight in Regina and Saskatchewan as a whole. Our organizations, RCBA, I think it's gotta be one of the best community basketball associations in Canada. Um, BSI, the high school leagues, just everything. It all just creates such a, a long lasting kind of community that people grow up in and and then take part in on other levels and on the board and coaching and whatever. So I think, yeah, it's, it's, don't count it out.
because the whole city really kind of livens up around LIT time. And as a as a kid, like LIT is the thing here, right? Watching Luther warm up, I the Tiger, one night in Bangkok playing these songs. <laughs> these songs are from the mid '80s, and they're just pounding them, and it is like. Loser, Something else. Black gold, black, black gold, black. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know how yeah. it goes. But. And that atmosphere and knowing that you're in your hometown playing basketball. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing beat LIT. And you're like, like marked it off in your calendars. I I remember like not even like sleeping like the week leading up. Just so so excited. People around the community that are you know casual fans will just come to this gym and come here. And this is like the mecca for. Um, basketball. It's the hickory. It is. And you come in this gym and uh, experience, you know, any day of that tournament, then you're automatically hooked. Yeah, I mean, the tournament's going on to its 70th year. I mean, it's the oldest running tournament in the country. It's a phenomenal event. The jewel, I would say, of high school basketball tournaments. That experience, I don't know, maybe Luther knows, but here we are. We got two Riffle kids and a Sheldon kid, and we're, we're celebrating what LIT means to us as you know, outsiders. We're outs like we're outsiders. We're not we're not Luther students. To Courtney Collin as the shot clock winds down. The ball falls off the iron. Tyler Wright taking it hard to the basket and he scores. Nice take by Tyler. I returned the following year. Jason was graduating from Sheldon and myself. Jason, uh, Ashley Gaiman, and Brennan Schwartz were the four big, uh, big, I don't know if you were big. Three, four, three, three big, and then one. Yeah. <laughs> we were the four recruits. Like we, were, we were the four recruits. Legendary all-Canadian Kevin Gilroy had just finished his career. Yeah. And somehow we were going to come in and fill his, his void. Gamers, <laughs> You know, like I was in grade 10 at the time when Trenamont was playing, and I remember talking to Christine, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna come play here. Like, I, this is where I wanna play. And then for the years after me as well, people were staying, like, you know, Phoebe Deciman, uh, Simone Bouchard, like there were other names where they were choosing to stay and play. And I think it was the focus on keeping local talent because then it gave the community someone to cheer for. We have had a lot of success um, the, as the University of Regina Cougar wins the basketball team. And I've been fortunate enough to be blessed, like I said, with some really good coaching and um, great friendships along the way. We were very fortunate as a team to win a national championship. And I think that's what most people remember that time for and remember that team. And, you know, I. I at that time, I don't even know if we realized just how special that was because that hasn't been replicated since. Um, I hope so. I hope it happens soon. Um, but it's, it's, it's hard to win a championship. So the year we won, I was in my second year and I didn't, I, I didn't fully understand the relevance or the importance of actually making it to nationals. Once we made it through, we were in uh, Edmonton. That final game, there were so many people that came from Regina that filled the stands and supported us. It really gave us a sense of community in that everybody kind of followed us to Alberta um, from the Regina basketball community. And that just, I think, gave us the edge that we needed to, um, to push through and to essentially become victorious. And I'm really proud to be a part of basketball in our province of Saskatchewan. And I think that's why I stay in my role as a high performance coach with Basketball Saskatchewan, is because I like that it showcases our community because our teams are always tight. It showcases our hard work because we're always gritty on the court and other provinces talk about that. But it also showcases on the court and off the court that people, for the most part, from Saskatchewan are good people. This community has really, I think, supported basketball and place of pride for us. I mean, the Cougars have been part of it, but I think it's, it goes all the way to our community basketball. You know, whether it's RCBA or just a kid, like I said, a newcomers getting together on the courts at Dr. George 
Ferguson or um, Indigenous communities, you know, everyone getting excited about playing the game in a different way. Um, like, you, you know, we, we noted it earlier, the Filipino community, so many people are getting excited about this game in this community. The relationship between the Philippines and basketball is a really unique one and an interesting one. And it begins with American colonialism. If you go to the Philippines, uh, basketball is being played everywhere. It's, uh, it's as much a part of Filipino culture as karaoke is. In the Philippines, you'll hear karaoke being played basically on every street corner in a bar uh, in the Philippines, someone is singing karaoke. Likewise, on nearly every street corner or back alley in the Philippines, somebody is shooting a basketball. Co-founders of Sabbath are Richard and Joe Alejandria, two brothers, and uh, Bernie Hernando, one of their best buddies. And so the three of them had this vision of creating a tournament for Asians, by Asians, most of whom are Filipino like me, Lao, Vietnamese, Chinese. So that Filipino sort of league, Filipino basketball culture, uh, it's all over North America. And there are really, there are guys who've played CIS, there's guys who've played pro in the Philippines and the PBA that have come and played at Sabbath and just lit it up. And that's always a show to, to, to watch as well as, as these elite basketball players of Asian heritage coming and, and doing their thing, packing the gym. And yeah, it's just, it's just a cool event. And uh, yeah, I encourage anyone who loves basketball to check out Sabbath. With the, with the league being called the Living Skies Indigenous Basketball League, um, and like I said, we're gonna have everybody involved, but something that we're gonna do is, is we have workshops and other things that are gonna be done off court. And that's where we can make a, a big impact, right? You know, there's, there's always gonna be the, the physical and the mental health and all those types of things from putting in time on a team and you do the leadership, um, skill development, those types of things. But we're gonna be looking at sharing some of the indigenous culture, some of the, the philosophies and stuff like that, that um, we, want, we wanna share that with everybody you know, and, and, and kind of celebrate a bit of the culture. There's always been, um, in Saskatchewan, there, there hasn't always been a, a good understanding of what's, what is going on and why some of the indigenous communities and some people in those communities are struggling and stuff like that. And I think with, with all this discussion now around, around the truth and reconciliation and, and, and the awareness that that's kind of started and, and more people taking part and, and wanting to understand and wanting to know why things are the way that they are. And so using that as a tool to reach out to people and to share a bit of our culture, to, to have a better understanding and appreciation is something that, that is going to go a long ways. And I really think that that sport is, is, is a huge vehicle to, to drive reconciliation for young people. What, what I believe in is removing as many barriers as possible, you know, for especially for our Indigenous youth. You know, I remember when we would have sports there, uh, you know, the community wasn't involved. Um, if I had a game or if we were, you know, doing a volleyball tournament, it was only students. Now that, you know, there is a lot more organization around it uh, and just seeing the amount of kids like, that are there, I mean, even sitting on the bench, like that, to have kids actually sitting on the bench, like that's, um, that's a huge move um, from where we were. I think that when it comes to basketball, it's more inclusive than other sports because there's less equipment needed. We have here at our school, we have one hoop and a pavement, and the kids are able to play on, on the pavement all day long. So they'll, they'll be able to play every single recess after school all the way till whatever time. I'll be leaving here from doing my work and I'm still seeing them shooting on the one hoop that they've been shooting on all day. And so I think that speaks to the level of accessibility that basketball brings that other sports don't really bring. Reconciliation through sport for us has always been something that we've wanted to see happen. I've always seen the partnerships and, and the friendships and stuff that have transcended any type of culture and how the, the, the pure joy and love for a game brings everybody together.
Well, first off, the outdoor cage is huge. I don't think that, I don't know if you guys have gotten the proper credit that you guys deserve for what you've done. Creating that space alone has created so much um, community and culture for Regina. Let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never like those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All I really take is a little taste. Allen girl, blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it and get away. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all got the semi four way. Don't step out the line like this, a probate. You hit the line and try to locate. This for the time, got time for no day. One, too many, I'm going. Two, too crazy, and I got three. bad ones, and they ready. Four. A good time, so now it's in the whip, we left that. Can't remember anything, but I know we got lit, lit, lit.